Okay, so I have a confession, and that's that I suck at color grading. It's just so hard, and there's so much to learn. <laughs> And even though I use one of the best pieces of software for color, which is DaVinci Resolve, I still find it difficult and I still struggle with color grading. But I have found probably my new favorite way of grading and a new set of tools, and it's simply just using DCTLs. With DCTLs, you can do stuff like this. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, Spencer, you can do that natively in Resolve by just using selective color and masking out or subtractive color or whatever else. And you're right, but I don't know how to do that. But you know who does? The people who make DCTLs. And then they make these tools that make it so much easier to subtract the reds or lift the greens or just get really specific results that you're looking for very simply. I feel like they're just tools that make your life simpler and if you know this channel at all, you know that that's exactly what I'm into. So today I want to look at a roundup of my favorite DCTLs and how they can actually speed up your workflow. Okay, and before we get into it, you might be sitting there like, Spencer, what the fuck even is a DCTL? DCTL is short for DaVinci Color Transform Language. It's a scripting language used to create custom color transformations at a really precise pixel level. So the cool thing is once they're installed, you can use these in the color page just like any other effect. Okay, so now that you know that, let's jump on to the computer. Okay, before we dive into this, let me just say that there are a ton of DCTLs out there online. What I'm covering today is literally just a handful of tools that I like to use, but I'll leave everything that I talk about and other DCTLs that I think are cool in the description below. And one final note is that DCTLs only work within the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. Okay, that's it. That's all the notes that I have. Let's actually get into this. Okay, so let's take a look at Chroma Sat, which is arguably probably my favorite tool in this set that I'm gonna show you. But uh, this is just a shot that I literally have just converted into Rec. 709, nothing else. So we're going to look at saturation. So specifically uh, this red right here, because out of camera, it's not looking so red. It kind of looks washed out a bit. So I'll just demo the DCTL really quick. If I just crank up the saturation, you can see everything comes to life a bit. And then um, because we're like losing some of her skin tones, if I just bump up and eventually if you like crank it super high, it starts taking some other colors. So it's kind of like back where we started there. So basically the argument here for this DCTL is it's like a no think adding saturation and in a more precise manner, which perceptually would actually give you deeper colors. Okay, so I wanna start by doing it how I would kind of go about this, which would literally just be selecting this. So I've actually just keyed it out with the qualifier here and then just boosted the saturation. And it still doesn't look red. It's almost like going pink now. So if I, turn that off and I turn on just my red saturation. Let's go 1.3. You can see that's looking really deep and really saturated. And that is, I would say, kind of close to the same saturation level. You can see it's like no, nowhere near the same quality. So you might be sitting there saying, Spencer, use the new color slicer. And sure, we'll, we'll come in. This is our red channel here, and this is our saturation. So we're just going to dial up the red. I feel like it's actually closer, but we're sitting maybe 1.5. It's looking very deep. It's looking great. Let's boost this a little bit more to 1.4. That's like way deeper still. Let's just zoom in here because I want to show you something, which is a massive difference for the DCTLs. Look at the red break apart in her pants, in her hands. Let's turn on the DCTL. It's got a much higher breaking point, like just after 1.5 here, you can start seeing the artifacting. But in terms of like how deep that red is in comparison, still, it's, it's almost not comparable. I would say it's more like a filmic saturation, which I think this is what the color slice is aiming for, like density and saturation is what we're gonna be looking at today. But I do think the DCTLs, because they're able to kind of get on a pixel level, a little bit better results here. So I'm gonna dial this back down and I'm really happy with how that turns out. I'm going to also boost the yellows a bit and the greens. 
So let's continue working on this shot, actually. So these are kind of hand in hand, obviously in the color slice, you already have these tools, but as I've shown you, they are actually different. So I've just moved my density node before my saturation node to avoid any like weird artifacting and clipping. So you can see if I really ramp up the red, we're actually getting a totally different result now. So I'll toggle that off and on. And I'll actually turn our color slice back on and we're going to ramp up and let's go up to like maybe two five. That's looking pretty dense, but what does this one look like? It's just a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Again, I've like pushed it all the way, like just to see like how far we can get here. With this tool, it actually has a hue overlay, so you can kind of tell what's going on here. So if I disable everything here, you can see if we look at the red values on the side, it actually gets wider. That's pretty much what you're doing. So if I, let's, what's an easy one to see green? If I make the green, you can actually see the green go wider, the blue go wider, and we'll make the cyan. So you can see that they just all stretch out. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's make that red. And let's make that green. Let's see how much the greens will change here. Yeah, darken those right up and bring out the sky. So this film density DCTL is actually working by lowering the luminance of certain colors to emulate that like thickness or density of highly saturated colors shot on film. So again, it's, this is going after that like filmic look. It just looks great. And it's only two nodes and I didn't even add contrast, but everything looks well saturated here. Okay, and there's no way I could leave out a fun one. So this one is called a texturator. And basically all it does is makes kind of like a sci-fi retro glitch style effect. So all I've done here is put it in black and white. I'll jump over to the color page here. Okay, so let's start with the actual just basic footage here. So all I've done is put a mosaic blur and then turned it black and white. Wow, that's actually pretty crazy. Let's leave the blur off for right now because I, I filmed this with a camcorder, so it's already like kind of grainy enough. So that's it with black and white. And then this DCTL is literally called just Texturator 800. So I wanted to include this one just because not all DCTLs are like created for just like really crazy color stuff. And we'll get into one of my favorites in just a little bit, but I had to include this one because it's kind of fun. So this is a pretty specific use case when you want to make your your footage kind of like sci-fi e. and there's a ton of different sliders to play with in here. But uh, I think it's a good one to have on hand and especially for free when you're just having fun. What's not to like? So if you're into this glitch kind of thing, there's also a bunch of other DCTLs that can do similar stuff. Like this one just came out and it looks like a modulation. This one is a really great suite that's actually been in After Effects forever and I'm really stoked that it's come over into Resolve. I just wanted to note that just in case you're looking for more things that'll just like make your footage look different and yeah, like just crazy. Uh, AE Scripts is a really great place to check. So this one's also free and it's called Tetra. It's just by far a way better way to manipulate colors, in my opinion, coming from somebody who's not that efficient. <laughs> Basically, it lays everything out for you, so it's pretty much dummy proof, in my opinion. So let's manipulate this red. So instead, we want red and we want to push it to blue. So we're just going to drag that slider over and it pushes blues, which red press blue is going to turn it like a purple. And if we subtract it out, we're kind of going in yellow. So this one is green, so it's gonna push through green. And then red to red, it's just really gonna pump the red. And then reversely, if we take it out, it'll just make it black. So this is a really great thing if you're trying to like get these greens to be like a different color or pretty much any color. So let's look for green. So we got cyan green here, and then we got green blue. So if we push the blues, and then let's bring the cyan. This is totally different from where we started. And it's honestly not a bad look. It's just a little bit cooler here. It's really great for just tweaking specific colors and only aiming at those colors. So if we just wanted to manipulate the sky, we would come up to the cyan. Maybe we could push it way more blue. Or in the opposite direction, it would make it more green. 
So let's push a little bit of blue and then let's go down to the whites. Let's drag those around. So you're getting crazy results with that now. So I feel like this is a really good way of like getting an overall vibe if it's subtle and done right. But again, like that doesn't even look that bad, but it's a big change from where we were. And it's just cranking around some sliders, having some fun. Okay, so this next one's really important to me. I wish it was built in. It's actually by the same guy who made the texturator, and it's basically just guides, but with a whole lot of flexibility. So I find a downside of Resolve coming from Premiere is just being able to like quickly toggle on and off like your action safe, your title safe, and your like midpoint when you're just trying to like line shots up or other things. But the thing I like about this is that it's got pretty much everything you could ever want. So all of these are like kind of your basics. So the next thing down here is the thing that I really love is basically drawing your own guides, which I don't know why it's not built in right into DaVinci. Maybe I'm just missing something. I'm not sure. <laughs> but basically anything that starts with a V is vertical. So if I bring up something like this and I go to this like light post and I can tell, oh, my tripod's either off or those light posts are off, but let's put something up in the back here. So this is what I would use for like my eye line to like match my next shot basically to be like, okay, make sure the horizon like falls off right there and then I'll have like a perfect eye line. And the good thing about this is you can add multiples if you're trying to do different ones. Labels at the end are basically the colors. So it's like horizontal, this is the sixth one and it's yellow and come down to ratio and I like that he already has built this in as well. So we got a bunch of ratios that you can just jump to if you're looking for CinemaScope, if you're looking for Vista Vision or vertical video, it's already all done for you and I really love that. He kind of thought of everything. So for me at least, this is definitely a no-brainer must-have. So that's everything I use in my workflow right now. If you have any that I haven't mentioned, definitely drop them in the comments below and I'll check them out. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.